So it is no secret guys that the PS5 is selling out within seconds and only a few amount of people have been able to check out the PS5 and now they're selling it for like a thousand, two thousand dollars, way above the five hundred dollar retail price. And the only way to check out the PS5 is to know exactly when it is in stock and in this video guys I'll be showing you how to create a program with very little CS experience that will notify you exactly when the PS5 is back in stock. And this will come in super handy for the next coming weeks because yes, Walmart is hosting a big drop this Wednesday as well as on Black Friday, but they will also be releasing PS5 on some mini drops that a lot of people will not know about, a lot of tracking websites will not tell you, and the only way to know if the PS5 is back in stock is using a program such as this. So let's make this program so that you guys can get this PS5. All right guys, so getting into the code, first things first, I grabbed two URLs from Walmart, one being the PlayStation 5 URL and the other being a random product. You see right here, this is the PlayStation 5 URL, I just copy pasted it, and this is the random product right here. This product is in stock, okay, because you can see the add to cart right here. The PS5, as we all know, is out of stock and will be restocking uh, the 25th of November at 9 p.m. And it will have other restocks uh, throughout the coming days, like on Black Friday, we'll have another restock. So, you know, you want to be aware when the PS5 restocks so you can get it immediately. And that's what we're about to create. So getting into it, we're going to make a map function that basically returns us a page of the browser. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to do const browser equals await puppet, oops, await puppeteer dot launch. And we're going to pass in the parameter headless true. And then we're going to, um, make a page and the way we get this page is by calling this method right here and we're gonna make the page go to the URL right and right now we'll we'll make it go to the random URL which is really this product right here this X rocker solo and then we're just gonna return the page uh, right there and now now that we have a method that gets us the page we, we want to check the stock of the page so let's call the function checks we want to check the stock of the product my fault and pass it in the page object which are going which we're going to be needing um to actually evaluate the html of the page so first things first we're going to call the reload method the reason being this method this program like ultimately is going to be running after every 15 to 30 seconds and what's going to happen is that every time you create a browser you don't want to create another page and keep creating browsers because then your computer will run out of memory. So you want to use the same page and just make it reload. And every time it reloads, it'll grab all the data once again, and then you'll be updated on whether the product is in stock or out of stock. So in order to you know get the HTML of the page, we're gonna have to call this method right here. Oh, wait, page dot evaluate um, document dot body dot enter html so this right here will grab us the content of the page which is what we want right and then we're going to parse through it and decide whether the product is in stock or not so let's make sure this works all right it will be tragic if we can't even get this part working we're out here creating a ps5 drop monitor let's call it method monitor uh we'll, let's say let page equals uh, weight init browser so this will get us the page right the page will already be at the url and now we're just going to check the stock so we'll check stock oh, wait check stock of the page and now we will be able to just see the html uh, right now obviously the stock is not being checked we're just trying to get the html of the page mm -hmm. and then of course we will call the method Hopefully this works. Fingers crossed. Um, okay. So node. Look at that. This guy's right here is definitely HTML. All right. So now that we got the HTML of the page, now we have to actually you know, parse the HTML and see what can we look for to decide whether the item is in stock or not. In order to do this, we're going to actually go on the links themselves and we're going to use a developer console. Now, let me exit this out. 
and by using the developer console we can look for something in the html that will you know let us know whether the item is in stock or out of stock and we need to be careful we can't be using the wrong thing as our decider because if we do that we can get like fake false positives the item we may get an alert that says the items in stock when it's out of stock so this is like the you know the most careful part let's say uh you do add to cart um you know, i just want to see what's the html looking like um let's do a control f and let's search up in stock okay so if we see back in stock timeout what else do we see right here we see availability equals in stock uh that's cool so this right here you know this is an indicator of the item's availability and apparently it's in stock which is you know true so let's look at the playstation 5's html and see if it has that exact same html element but with something that says out of stock and if it does then we can use that so let me search up in stock Okay, so that, see, if we use that back in stock timeout, then we would have been getting false positives. And you can see there's only one of one, which means that that availability uh, in stock is not present for the PS5, which makes sense. Let's search up out of stock. Out of stock. Okay. There you go. Right here. The exact same HTML element. You see? Item prop equals availability in stock. Item prop equals availability out of stock. So we will be using this element right here to decide whether the item is in stock or out of stock. So this is what we're going to be looking for in the HTML. So exactly how do you do that? Well, in this method, we're going to use, oh, let me take this out right here. Um, we're going to use jQuery, and what we're basically going to do is look for the item with this selector so link item prop equals availability so availability i'm telling you guys a programmer's worst nightmare is spelling like you don't understand how many how spelling mistakes can really mess up your code and this will basically search for every single item that has or every single element that has link prop item prop or link item prop because availability in it and we're gonna call this method and really only one element on the entire html has this uh is this right there's not gonna be multiple of this so we, we don't have to worry about you know making sure that we're on the right one so call this method and now what we're gonna do is actually check this attribute right here and see whether it says out of stock or see whether it says in stock. All right, so let's set a variable equal to the result of whether the item has href equal out of stock or in stock. So what we're gonna do is we're basically checking the value of this href uh, attribute. And this will either say the schema in stock or schema out of stock. Um, so we got the value, and we're going to say whether it includes um, out of stock. So this will be a Boolean value. Now, the thing is, guys, whenever you, you know, want to do some string checking, whether this substring is in the you know, overall string, you always want to do dot to lowercase. And the reason I say this, hold up. is because you don't want to try to account for capitalization of certain letters and like lowercase for certain letters that's that's just too much work so just convert everything to lowercase or convert everything to uppercase and just check the substring with just lowercase characters so if this is out of stock right like the playstation 5 we'll you know process it and say hey the item is out of stock so if out Oh, if in out stock, I you just say this. Let's name this out of stock. So if it's out of stock, console.log out of stock. Now, if it's in stock, we're going to log in stock. 
Now let's test this part right here and make sure that we get out of stock when we pass in the PS5 URL, which is the URL right here, and in stock for the RAND URL. So remember guys, we're looking for the in stock alert when I run this program because we know this item is in stock. So when I run this program, it better say in stock, otherwise something is wrong. But before that, I actually forgot to use my ending bracket and pass in the HTML that we are using to look for this. Like, we're looking for this, but in what context? The HTML, right? So I totally forgot to pass in the HTML, so it's there now. So everything should be good. And now we're gonna run this and hopefully everything's Gucci. So node monitor.js. And I made headless false by the way. I changed it before I just you know started recording because we want to see what's going on, right? I want to show you guys exactly what's going on. So you see right here, it goes directly to the page of the URL that you you know passed in. Let's see if it's in stock. We should be getting an alert anytime now. Right there, boom. We got it. It's in stock. So our monitor works for the in stock item. So now let's pass in the PS5 URL and check if the item is out of stock to make sure it works for the PS5 as well. Because remember guys, we know this item is in stock. So the in stock item is set to be in stock, but the out of stock item is set to be out of stock. If this works, we know our program is legit. All right, so it goes to the URL, right? It does nothing, it just goes to the URL and we should be getting an out of stock alert. Boom, nice and easy, look at that. All right guys, so now that we know our in stock and out of stock alerts are working just fine, we're going to use the following to um, make this automated and make this program run every, uh, let's say 15 to 30 seconds. So in order to do so, I actually have the docs pulled up on my phone you have to use a cron job library. I'm not, you know, too familiar with it. I only know like literally one thing about it, but it's the one thing you need to know. The format is kind of weird. It's, it's really weird. So I wrote it down on a piece of paper, but this number represents the duration, the interval for after how many seconds do you want me to run whatever job you know I'm supposed to run. So it's okay, four, after, after, and then you call function. function. So and this one basically do job. In our case, obviously, we do job. Job of the stage right here, right? Um, and all we're doing, all we're doing, and after that, you want to pass in what says this no, true, no, that's, that's okay. yes, no, then true. And then you want to jo uh, start the job. So job dot start. I made a method called send notifications. All it literally does is it creates a transport, right? Um, you pick the service, Gmail, because, you know, cool people use Gmail. You have your username, in terms of your, which is your email. You have your password. It's stars right now, but you put, put your outro password. So if your outro password is, like, bogus man, you should put bogus man as your password. I'm not going to show you guys that. So after that, you do text to send. is basically whatever text you're going to send, uh, the HTML of that uh, text. Then you want where it's from, who is it from? Uh, you can say Walmart monitor, um, my Gmail, to my Gmail because you're sending it to yourself, right? I mean, you can put anyone's from and put anyone's to, but like, what's wrong with sending it to yourself? Subject, so the subject header, uh, the text that you're sending, right, and the HTML corresponding. If it's in stock, right, I don't care about the console.log. What I care about is getting notified. So I'll do send notification. There you go. I'm gonna wait to send notification. So now everything should be good. Every 15 seconds, we should be getting, um, well, considering the items in stock, we will be getting an email saying that hey, the items in stock. And what we're gonna do is use the um, we're gonna pass in the Rand URL because guys, the PS5 is not in stock right now at the time of this video. So you're not getting any email anytime soon. So we're gonna use this random URL product and we'll pass in RAND URL as well, right? So we'll hopefully run this program and I should be getting an email. All right guys, so it's time to test. Hopefully everything works and we get the notification guys. And RV Business 1M is my business email and I changed that instead of my XR my email. And I also wrote my password in the auth section, which I showed earlier. I'm not gonna scroll up because if I scroll up, you guys will see my email's password and I don't want that, right? So make sure no one knows your email password. But we're gonna run this program. Um, where'd it go? There it is. So let's put that away. 
node monitor.js and so I got loaded. All right, so right here, you will see. Okay, let's look at the real top. It's a Google critical security alert. That's for something else though, so don't worry about it. Right there, right there, boom. Let me click it. You see that? PlayStation 5 is in stock, and if I click the link, it takes you to the Walmart app. Boom, the product, there you go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you guys learned a lot. And now you all have a program that will notify you exactly when the PS5 is back in stock. And that way you can get the PS5 before anyone else. So leave a comment, leave a like, share the video, subscribe, let your friends make this program so they can also get a PS5 because everybody eats. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out, dude. Peace out, dude. Peace.